Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2018 <coughs> here in Durban, South Africa, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Malcolm Johnson, who is the Deputy Secretary General for ITU. Mr. Johnson, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Max. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about uh, digital development. What does digital development mean to you, and how is ITU working towards it? Well, my Twitter banner says, my vision is a digital future where nobody is left behind and opportunities have no boundaries. So everyone everywhere needs to have access to ICTs. And that means not just those in developed countries, but developing countries. Those living in cities, those living in rural areas. Men and women, old and young. Everyone everywhere needs to be connected. And this is uh, quite a challenge because as we know, almost half of the world's population is still offline. And most of those are living in rural, remote, isolated communities um, where connectivity is difficult. Difficult because, often because of the terrain, uh, because they're isolated, uh, but also because the return on investment in those areas is much poorer, of course, than, than the urban areas. So I think that's uh, the biggest challenge facing ITU uh, when ITU's mission is to connect the world. And um, clearly, we need to reach out to all these areas. Uh, it's something I'm particularly passionate about, having been born and brought up in a in a little village in the middle of Wales, so I can very much relate to that. But it's not just a question of connectivity because uh, statistics show that 80% of the world's population is covered by at least 3G services. So it's uh, clearly uh, other reasons uh, why people are not connecting. And that, of course, one of the main things is affordability. The services and the equipment have to be affordable but also the content has to be relevant to people in order for them to invest in, in the service or, the, or buy the equipment. So it, content has got to be relevant to the locality. It's got to be in the local language. People have to have the digital literacy skills to take advantage of it. And also, of course, people need to be able to trust the technology. So ITU is doing a lot, of course, on addressing these challenges. I mean, the core function of ITU, going back to its origin, is to harmonize the spectrum, coordinate satellite orbits, and develop common standards. Only through that do we have interoperability, interconnectivity, and do we, can we benefit from the economies of scale to bring down the costs? So that's a very important area of ITU work. And of course, I believe we need to, the organization needs to do a lot more uh, on the developmental side. You know, we have to put more resources into capacity building and into projects to uh, bring everyone online to give access to the technology. So in ITU, we have a lot of uh, expertise. You know, with, uh, we have 600 private sector members. We have thousands of experts working in ITU. So we have the expertise, but we don't have the big budget, the big budget of the don donor agencies like UNDP or World Bank. So I think we need to do a lot more to collaborate with these other organizations so that we bring our relevant competencies to the table. Uh, we avoid duplication of effort and pool our resources to meet the, the common good. In terms of innovation, I think innovation obviously is, is particularly important and very much in evidence here at ITU Telecom World. What single innovation or innovative technology, product, strategy or policy do you think is going to be the most transformative? Well, technology is moving at an ever accelerating pace. Um, I believe ITU has to ensure that these major technological advances like IoT, 5G, artificial intelligence, big 
big data, cloud, uh, don't widen the gap between the developed and the developing countries, but close the gap. Um, so we need to concentrate on some of our key flagship uh, initiatives, such as bridging the standardization gap and the conformance and interoperability program. We need to involve uh, people from developing countries in this work so that their own specific requirements are included in our standards and that they have a better understanding of these very complex standards and know which ones suit them best and, and how to implement them. And also, of course, the conformance and interoperability program was set up to ensure that um, products coming onto the market meet international standards uh, and not counterfeit uh, and can interoperate with products produced by different vendors. So I was very pleased uh, at the, um, the Ghana Day uh, event yesterday uh, to see that these initiatives are bearing fruit. Ghana established a, a testing center for West Africa. Um, so it's very nice to see that uh, these, these initiatives are bearing fruit. Yes, as, as well as Ghana, there are lots of other countries here as well who are all very much benefiting from the conversations and uh, the exchange of information here. I wanted to ask you, what do you think is the key value for events such as ITU Telecom World? Well, for me personally, to start with, um, as you know, I spend most of my time in Geneva. Uh, my job is managing the organization, but also uh, running the the uh, the the project on the on the new building taking a lot of my time so it's very nice to be able to come here and have the opportunity to meet so many uh, friends and colleagues from around the world to talk with them about how ITU can uh, further improve its efforts to meet the needs of the industry and and our membership but for the participants uh, it's a very nice platform i believe because it's a tremendous mix, government, regulators, academia, private sector, and, and of course we have the startups and the, and the, and the um, SMEs participating. So it's, it's a wonderful platform for people to establish new business connections, develop business uh, partnerships, develop their strategy, get some good ideas to take home, and, uh, and further their businesses. Um, and so I see that uh, that as being uh, a very beneficial and I've heard that from a lot of the participants. They've found it very beneficial, which is very nice to hear. I believe that uh, it will help them with their businesses, um, particularly interested in helping the, sp uh, the startups, SMEs. That's the really focus of the event and uh, it seems to be the case. Well, I'm very keen to see um, a new category of membership for SMEs. Hopefully that will be addressed at the Plenipotentiary Conference next month um, and uh, allow them to participate in ITU's work because a lot of the innovation is coming from them and ITU needs them because it takes a long time to develop uh, the standards to meet the, the new technologies. And we need to, to see into the future and a lot of the future is coming out of uh, startups. So we need them to participate and, and their participation will help them because they can make uh, the connections through the fantastically wide membership that we have in ITU, uh, meet, make up uh, partnerships with some of the big companies. Perhaps we could finish with a, a message from you to participants here at ITU Telecom World in Durban, but also uh, for those uh, watching and, and listening around the globe. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for participating. I think uh, it's been a wonderful event. I'd like to especially thank our hosts, of course, the South African government, and uh, also, of course, uh, the city of Durban for such a friendly and welcoming uh, a reception that we've, we've enjoyed here. It's a beautiful city. It's nice to be back in Durban. And um, I, I, I think that uh, uh, as I said, everybody has, has benefited. Um, I would hope that uh, it's going to help their businesses uh, to, to move forward and will, through that will help 
bring this wonderful technology to everyone everywhere. And I uh, hope that uh, we'll see you all at ITU Well Telecom next year. Malcolm Johnson, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.